The report then goes on to look at how these issues play out in practice by examining how AI is having an impact on human rights in four key sectors where it's being deployed. Namely, first in the law enforcement, national security, criminal justice, and border management area, where we see AI being used for profiling and suspect identification, biometric technologies such as facial recognition and emotional recognition uh, being used, including remotely and real time to identify people uh, with documented cases of erroneous identification and disproportionate impacts on certain groups, uh, often minorities. The crux of the argument made in the report is simple. Artificial intelligence poses enormous risks for human rights, and despite those implications, it has been designed and deployed across systems critical to our most basic freedoms without proper regulation or oversight. This is not about the risks of AI for human rights in the future. It is about the reality we see today. Without immediate and far-reaching shifts in how we address AI deployment and development, the existing harms will multiply at scale and with speed. And the worst part of it is, we won't even know the extent of the problem because there is so little transparency around artificial intelligence and its use. National security, criminal justice, and border management area, where we see AI being used for profiling and suspect identification. First, we call for a moratorium on the sale and use of AI systems that carry a high risk uh, relating to the enjoyment of human rights, unless and until adequate safeguards to protect human rights are in place. The High Commissioner also recommends specifically a moratorium on the use of remote biometric recognition technology in public spaces, given the serious threats to public freedoms associated with such surveillance. Companies have a central role here, and they need to step up their human rights due diligence regarding technologies they develop and dramatically increase the transparency regarding their use and sale of AI, and to take action to ensure greater diversity within their own workforces working on AI, among a number of other steps. Multiple calls for pausing the deployment and use of digital technology. As our work makes abundantly clear, AI is already part of our lives, and there is no time to lose in the fight to ensure that it is designed and deployed in a manner that makes our societies better and more rights respecting, rather than being a tool that enables discrimination, invades our privacy, and undermines our rights. We call for such applications to move <laughs> On the first one about facial recognition and, and whether there's evidence about its, its discriminatory um, impact and, and uh, inability to, to, you know, work effect as effectively uh, with regards to women and to people of color. I mean, I think the evidence is in, and, and that, yes, there absolutely is a problem, and the companies themselves, I think, have, have recognized that. The question is really, you know, what's been done about it since we recognize that, and how are we um, ensuring that, uh, that this technology, which is not scientifically accurate in that regard is, is being adjusted and, and not being deployed in circumstances where that flaw is, will result in human rights consequences. And we want to support innovation. There are ways in which innovation with new technologies like this can actually be incredibly beneficial to human rights, and we want to emphasize that. This is not about, you know, not having AI. It's about recognizing that if AI is going to be used in these human rights very critical function areas, that it's got to be done in the right way, and we simply haven't yet put in place a framework that ensures that happens. So